Hey everyone, at Homeschool Arcade today we're digging deeper into zoology as we talk about animal classifications. Have you ever come across something completely new? Like something you've never seen before? And the moment you start to look at it, you begin to acquire information. The moment you see it, you begin to ask yourself questions like, how big does this look? What color is it? What kind of texture on it? Or you might say, what are some special features that I see on this new thing? Well, what you're doing when you do that, what zoologists call that is taxonomy. And it's the process of organizing and understanding creatures based on their characteristics. And that's what we're going to look into today. Here's some examples of classification for you. All right, what do we have here? We have a snail, a clam, and a scallop. But what do all these things have in common? Well, what I can tell you is this. Each of these creatures have soft bodies. And when you look at the bodies, there's, there's no segments in it. It's just one big body. It's just one part. And then there's something that's covering that body, like a shell, like the snail shell, the clam shell. And you know what we call these? These are called mollusks. And so that's how we classify them as mollusks. Let's do another one. Here we have a sea star, a sea urchin, and a sea cucumber. Now some of the characteristics common among these is they always live in a marine environment, always water. They have an unsegmented body and they don't have a head. And the body is a really unique kind of shape. It can be star-like, sometimes it's elongated, or sometimes it's more like it's spherical, it's more like a ball. And in this group, we call these echinoderms. Let's just do one more, and then we'll move on. All right, we have a frog, a bird, and we're just going to call this one a mammal. Now, each of these have an organ system inside their bodies, just as you and I have organs inside of our bodies, these are creatures that share the same thing. They also have what's called a, a notochord. Or, or, or some of us might just call that a backbone, but what a notochord essentially is, is it's a central nervous system of some kind that makes everything work. And we call these chordates. And this is actually where you and I belong. We belong in this group of chordates. So my hope is that by sharing this with you, this gives you kind of an idea of what we're talking about. We're talking about classifying creatures and we talk about taxonomy. FYI for your information. Some animals are difficult to classify. The platypus has fur like a mammal, but lays eggs like a bird or a reptile. Now, why is taxonomy important? Well, first, taxonomy helps us to categorize organisms so we can more easily study, understand, and communicate information. It just makes it easier to handle this wealth of information that we're pulling in. Another reason is it helps us to understand the, the unique characteristics of an animal or a plant before we ever even have the chance to really get into an in-depth study. We already understand some of its basic characteristics. Another is that it helps us to identify local animals, and therefore it allows scientists to spot possibly invasive species more easily. Also, by understanding biodiversity in a particular location, it helps us to make better decisions about conservation and sustainability. So in summary, taxonomy helps us to better organize and understand all of the vast information that's gathered. So we can look at relationships between animals, animals and environment, and other things related 
to zoology and animal biology. Now, before we go any further, I want to make sure I give credit to where credit is due. And that's to the one that came up with the process of taxonomy. The modern way we classify biology was developed by Swedish botanist Carolus Linnaeus in the 1700s. He tried to classify all living things that were known at his time. He grouped together organisms that shared obvious physical characteristics. In the case of animals, it might be the number of legs, or in the case of plants, it might be the shapes of their leaves. But because of this, Linnaeus is known as the father of taxonomy. Now, when we're talking about animal classification, we move from the broadest description of something to the more detailed description of something. So let's take, for instance, mammals. I'm a mammal. And my dog Maple here is a mammal. But if we were to be more detailed, we would say I am a human and Maple is a dog. So here we go. At the broadest point of our categories, we have the domain. And domain covers all living things. And then beneath that, we have what is called the kingdom. Phylum class, order, family, genus, and species. Now, if you have a hard time remembering that, there are some mnemonics. Uh, the one I heard while I was studying all this was, Dear King Peter came over for great spaghetti. But to be honest, I had a hard time remembering that, so I had more fun making my own. So I, I used this mnemonic. Donkey Kong presses coconuts on freaky giant spiders. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Donkey Kong presses coconuts on freaky giant spiders. Now, we're not going to go into all of these in great detail, but if you would like us to, please let us know in the comments below. But right now, we're going to focus on phylum. That is to say that under the domain that is called you. Eukarya, Kingdom Animalia, there are 36 categories for trying to understand all animal life. However, nine covers a majority of all animal life. And what we'll do is we're going to create a series of videos that is going to go through each of these individually. First, we're going to have the phyla known as periphera, different types of sponges. Then we're going to have cnidaria, sea anemone, jellyfish, corals, and hydras. Then we have platyhelminthes. That covers flatworms and tapeworms, flukes, and other parasites. Then we have nematoda, roundworms, followed by annelida, segmented worms, earthworms, polychaetes, and leeches. Then we have the phyla mollusca, slugs, snails, mussels, clams, and then squids and octopus are here as well. And then we have arthropods, arthropoda, lobsters, crabs, insects, spiders, scorpions, and lots of things with little creepy crawly legs. Then we have echinodermata, sea stars and sea urchins, sea cucumbers. And last, but certainly not least, and probably the most diverse, is chordata. Sharks and lampreys, bony fish, frogs, lizards, birds, turtles, and mammals as well. So we really have a lot of great information coming this way. And if you're interested in this topic or any of our other videos, please click subscribe and the bell so you can be notified as videos are coming out. And feel free to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And let's get to it.